Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon, welcoming you to Trico's 15th edition. Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon and I'm delighted to be here with Dr. Tarkwan in Trico's 15th edition. Welcome. Thank you very much. Can we start by you telling us a little bit more about yourself, Dr. Tarkwan? Oh, okay. My name is Tarkwan. I'm the professor of medicine in Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City. And I'm the director of a cardiac catheterization laboratory in Mount Sinai, St. Luke. Hospital. So you've come a long way for us today. We're really grateful to have you here. It's, it's oh, always a pleasure you. to have you. Always. We've seen some fantastic live cases this morning, really interesting cases. Yes. What are your thoughts on what you've seen so far? So I saw a couple of good live cases. The one is a Dr. TJ Patel performing the left main diagonal LED bifurcation uh, using only two wide, two stand and have a perfect result with OCT guidance. That's excellent for the first case. Then Dr. Saito P from an excellent, amazing CTO. Yes. Okay. And this one is just blow my mind. Mm. Okay. Of course, I did another one today of the bifurcation using, I call the gel balloon technique to do this uh, difficult bifurcation. And Dr. TJ Patel, has told me this is the first gel balloon technique in Chaiko. Oh. So this morning is a very exciting morning. It's, it's been a groundbreaking morning, really, really oh, yes. exciting for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so many young cardiologists in our audience this morning. Um, what messages have you got for those young cardiologists who are here today and coming through the ranks? Um, the message, I think the important message for the young cardiologists is start with simple, simple cases and learn from the basic. And this morning, we everybody really start from beginning, step by step. Start with a puncture technique, how to engage a catheter, how to put a wire in, and then perform the cases. Either it's a complex cases, but we start simple. I think the young cardiologists can learn a lot from that. Mm. Technology is taking PCI precision to another level. Let's talk a little bit about OCT. We've seen some this morning. What are your thoughts on the technology? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm. This is, uh, we call precision PCI or optimize the PCI using the imaging technology. And OCT is one of them. We know the long-term outcome or the short-term outcome really important for patient. Mm. And the precision imaging guided PCI can really do that. OCT is a new technology, mm. may not be that new, but it's still new to a lot of people, yeah. especially young fellow. Mm -hmm. The OCT, the imaging this morning is excellent, mm. it's beautiful. And Dr. Akasaka is excellent teacher, leader of the world, mm. and he guide the step to step, mm -hmm. how to interpret the OCT or how to perform the OCT. Mm. It's very important. Mm. And how would you advise the young cardiologists to use OCT in their day-to-day -day practices? Yeah, I think that using OCT, the more the comfortable, the more they use, the more comfortable, more comfortable mm. they are. So I suggest they use every case is feasible. Yes. That's how they can get the training, how they get the learning. Yes. And another form of technology, robotics, We've seen the Apex Heart Institute perform over 500, yes. 500 procedures yes. in, in just two years, which yes. is the most in, in the whole world. And then more recently, the telerobotics, the first five cases globally of yes. telerobotics. What are your thoughts on that piece of technology and how that can launch us forward? Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I'm sure Dr. Patel, the whole team, I'm Congratulate them, they're number one in the world mm. to perform this 
amount of robotic mm. PCI in a short period of time. Mm. It's a very primitive technology. Mm -hmm. We have to know that it's not perfect. But of course, there's a lot of room to improve. Yes. Okay. So at this moment, I still not recommend it mm -hmm. in general use. Okay. Only in specific hand mm -hmm. and specific indication. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in the future, mm -hmm. this technology can improve. Mm -hmm. And at that time, this will be a robusting technology for yes. everything. So robotics, let's think about how it can transform the lives of those patients who are potentially in rural communities. What are your thoughts around being able to give a really incredible level of care to those who may not actually be able to access it at the moment? I think it's very, very important. Okay. So far, the, uh, only Dr. Patel has showed that he can do a case remotely. Mm. Okay. And not too many people in the world, okay, or not too many operators in the world can do that yet, especially in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. We still don't have the equipment or the technology or the ability mm -hmm. to handle that. Dr. Petro is the number one mm -hmm. to do that. In the future, more and more people can learn from Dr. Patel yes. or the technology improve because faster internet, yes. better equipment, yeah. then this one can be really important yeah. to help the patient in a remote area. Mm. We don't have access to the new technology. Yeah. This is perfect. So you think robotics are definitely here to stay? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Yes. And Dr. Takwan, just before I let you go back to the excitement downstairs, Trico, the future of Trico, what would you like to see Dr. Tejas Patel put on our agenda next? Oh, gosh. I think it's a very, very good question. Yeah, Dr. T.J. Patel has incorporated all the new technology we can name, okay, OCT, robotic, mm -hmm. etc., etc. But I think in the future, most likely we can expand in the structure heart, mm -hmm. like tower, mm -hmm. mitral yes. clips, um, appendix closure technology yes. uh, in this conference. Dr. Tuck thank you so much for joining us at the 15th edition of Trico. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.